Hello everyone, welcome to another video from the tutorial series SPM Plus Mastery and Certification. My name is Tabish. Today we will learn how to define an electrolyte system in SPM Plus and discuss the importance of Henry's component while dealing with the electrolyte system. Just a quick background about the electrolyte system. Electrolytes are the basic constituents of the electrolyte system and these are the substances that produce electrically conducting solutions when dissolved in the water. Typical examples of the electrolyte system include aqueous solutions of acids and bases, for example hydrogen chloride and sodium hydroxide. When acids are dissolved in the water, they produce hydrogen ions. And similarly, when bases are dissolved in the water, they produce hydroxyl ions. Similarly, another type of the electrolyte system is the solutions of the salt, for example, solution of sodium chloride. When sodium chloride is dissolved in the water, it dissociates into sodium ions and the chloride ions. Another example of the electrolyte system is the acid water solution. For example, the solution of acidic gases including hydrogen sulfide and carbon dioxide. When these gases are dissolved in the water, they produce weak acids. One of the very important example of such system is the water containing amine solvents, for example, monoethylene amine and diethylene amine. These are the solvents that are very commonly used in the industrial scale carbon dioxide capture from the CO2 rich gases. There is a range of industrial processes that involve electrolyte systems, for example, sour water stripping process in the petrochemical industry caustic brine evaporation and crystallization in the chloralkali industry, acid gas removal process, nitric acid separation, trona processing, organic salt separation, and black liquor evaporation. These are just a couple of examples of the industrial processes that involve the electrolyte systems. While dealing with the electrolyte systems, you must be aware of the following three very important characteristics. The first one is the solution chemistry in the liquid phase, then the concept of apparent and true component compositions, and a very important characteristic about the thermodynamic method for the calculation of thermophysical properties and parameters. What kind of solution chemistry is involved in the electrolyte systems? The solution chemistry involves a variety of chemical reactions in the liquid phase. For example, the complete dissociation of strong electrolytes partial dissociation of weak electrolytes, ionic reactions among ionic species, complex ion formations, and salt precipitation and dissolution. Generally, these reactions occur very rapidly in the solution phase, so the reactions are considered as the equilibrium reactions. What is the concept of apparent and true components? Let's take an example of the sour water stripping system that has three molecular components, including water, ammonia, and hydrogen sulfide. These three components are the parent components of the system and count as the apparent components are the parent components. However, in the solution phase, following four ionic reactions occur, and these reactions result in the formation of five ionic species. And these species include hydronium ion, hydroxyl ion, ammonium ion, and two sulfide ions. All the components in these reactions exist at equilibrium conditions and are termed as the true components of the electrolyte system. So the three parent components including water, ammonia and hydrogen sulfide are termed as the apparent components of the system whereas all the components involved in the ionic reactions are termed as the true components of the system. It is important to define the apparent and the true components of the system because such definition has a major effect on the calculations. In some of the processes, apparent components play a major role in the calculations because the process measurements are usually expressed in terms of the apparent components. Whereas in the other processes, defining the system in terms of the true components and basing the calculations on the true components is very important. In any case, the selection of apparent or the true component depends on the type of the electrolyte system you are simulating. In order to learn the process simulation of electrolyte system and reviewing the thermophysical properties of the system, let's consider following example. 
In this example, two feed streams labeled as HCl and NUH are mixed together. The HCl stream contains hydrochloric acid and water, whereas NUH stream contains sodium hydroxide and water. The mixer outlet is flashed where water is evaporated from the top stream and the concentrated salt solution leaves the bottom of the flash separator. It is highly probable that due to the evaporation of water molecules from the mixed stream, sodium chloride precipitates out of the system. So the conditions are provided for the feed stream where the feed streams enter the mixture at 25 degrees Celsius in one bar with corresponding molar compositions of the both streams and in the flash separator 75% of the stream is converted to the vapor phase where the top of the flash column is the vapor product and the bottom of the flash column is the liquid product. So you are asked to notice the stream temperature and phase fractions, the component concentrations including both apparent component and the true component and also notice the stream bubble points. Because of the different salt concentration in the mixed stream and the flash column bottom stream, it is anticipated that the bubble points of these both streams will be different. So let's open the SPM Plus and solve this example. Let's go to the new option. Here under the category of chemicals, there is a default template for electrolyte systems. Let's switch to the metric units. Select the electrolytes with the metric units. Here you can notice default property method defined for the template is the electrolyte NRTL. Open the selected template. So you can notice that for the electrolyte systems, water is defined as the default molecule. At HCl, we are okay with this warning. Also add NUH component. Go to the next option from here. Aspen Plus will automatically lead to the next input form. From the navigation pan, Aspen Plus led us to the method section under the parameters and under binding direction parameters. These are the binding direction parameters for equation of state. Let's go back to the component section. Now you can review the standard thermophysical properties of these components as retrieved from the experimental database. You can follow in the method section under pure components and in the review tab. These are the standard properties for the defined components. To better view, you can slightly zoom out. Here you can notice various thermophysical properties of water, hydrochloric acid and sodium hydroxide, especially the molecular weight, the freezing point of the three components, the freezing point of hydrochloric acid is minus 114.15 degrees Celsius, whereas the freezing point of sodium hydroxide is 322.85 degrees Celsius. Also the true boiling point of the three components for the hydrochloric acid it's minus 85.05 and for sodium hydroxide, it's 1554.76 degrees Celsius. So clearly at ambient conditions or the conditions provided in the example, hydrochloric acid will exist in the gas phase, whereas sodium hydroxide will exist in the solid phase. Since we are dealing with the electrolyte system, where all three components exist in the aqueous phase, it is necessary to define the system as the electrolyte system so that Aspen Plus and the thermophysical method can fairly estimate the thermophysical properties of the system. So for that purpose, go back to the component section. Under the component list, there is electrolyte wizard. Open the electrolyte wizard. Here you have the option of defining the reference state of the INA components, either unsymmetric or the symmetric components. You can view the help to better understand what does it mean by symmetric and unsymmetric components. When the basis is unsymmetric, activity coefficients of ions are based on the infinite dilution in pure water. Whereas in case of symmetric components, activity coefficients of the ions are based on the pure fused salts. So in the given system, we have the aqueous solution. So we will preferably use the unsymmetric component as the reference state. So we are okay with these definitions. Go to the next tab. Here the available components are mentioned in the left, those are not selected. The components should be shifted to the selection. Also check the option of include water dissociation reaction. 
here in the left side you have the option either to consider hydronium ions or the hydrogen ions while dealing the acidic systems hydrogen ions can be preferably used whereas in case of aqueous solutions or the electrolyte systems hydronium ions is the preferred one you go to the next section these are the ionic reactions retrieved from the aspen database in the given example we are not interested in considering sodium hydroxide present in the solid form so we can remove so the only salt component is the sodium chloride also under the category of property methods two thermodynamic methods are listed that can deal with the electrolyte systems either you can switch to electrolyte nrtl with the equation of strain or simply the electrolyte nrtl model for the given example let's consider electrolyte nrtl and go to the next tab here you need to select the simulation approach for the electrolyte system either you can consider true component approach or the apparent component approach for the given example true component approach is appropriate go to the next option the message window pops up indicating that the parameters will be updated we are okay with this either you can finish or you can review two sections and three components of the system and the solution chemistry in case of solution chemistry these are the four reactions considered for this system two equilibrium reactions one salt formation and one dissociation you can also consider the equilibrium constants of all these reactions we are okay with this also you can review the henry components here hcl is added as a henry component for the next simulation since hcl is non condensable gas in the selected conditions it should be so that the vapor liquid equilibrium of hcl component should be dealt with the henry's constant rather than its vapor pressure as defined by the raoult's law let's close this window and finish this section you can also review the solution chemistry under the section chemistry where all of the reactions corresponding specifications and equilibrium constants are defined you can review the henry's constants under the section henry components in the components tab where hcl is selected as the henry component please make sure that the henry component is also listed in the method section and the solution chemistry is also listed in the method specification tab under the section of electrolyte calculations option still you can notice that the status is required inputs incomplete you can review either from the navigation pan which section is incomplete or you can click the next button so the required information is already provided that is for the henry component hcl and its interaction with the aqueous component water these are the temperature dependent binding interaction parameters for the calculation of henry constant also at the bottom you need to review the section that defines parameters for the clark liquid density model similarly you can notice the half red filled circle under the tab electrolyte pair here you need to notice the energy parameters for the electrolyte pairs similarly the energy parameter d also the energy parameter e also you need to review the dimensional section of the electrolyte pairs you can notice that the status has been changed from incomplete to required properties input complete at this moment you can run the simulation once results are available either you can perform a parametric analysis or you can go to the simulation tab to define the flow sheet and the process simulation at the same time please don't forget to save the file in the simulation section you have to define the flow sheet first as the status also compels that the flow sheet not complete we have a mixer you can rename as mix as defined in the example and then we have a flash separator two outlet flash or the flash two also you need to connect the streams select the material stream from here drop it on the inlet port where the red arrows indicate the necessary connection ports name is hcl similarly there is another feed stream named as nuh 
one product stream connected to the flash column, one vapor stream from the top of the flash column, and one liquid stream from the bottom of the flash column. To get out of the stream selection, you can press the escape button. Also for the auto alignment of the flow sheet, just select the complete flow sheet. You can do it with the drag down or you can press control A button and reroute and align the flow sheet so that all the streams are automatically aligned. To have the better view of the working window, you can auto hide the model palette section. Now we need to define the specifications of the inlet streams. Both of the streams are entering at 25 degrees Celsius and one bar pressure. The composition of HCL stream is water flowing at a rate of 10 kmol per hour and HCL at 1 kmol per hour, whereas the sodium hydroxide water is flowing at the same rate as the HCL stream water flow is, but the sodium hydroxide flow rate is 1.1 kmol per hour. Similarly, the specification for the flash columns are there is no pressure drop and the vapor fraction in the flash column is 75%. Define the temperature as 25 degrees Celsius, pressure is 1 bar. You can define the total flow rate in this section and the composition in the right side, or you can define available flow rates directly in the composition section. For the HCL stream, the water flow is 10 kmol per hour, switch it to the mole flow, and the HCL flow is 1 kmol. So you can notice that the HCL stream has blue tick. That means all the required information has been provided. Either you can go to the next section to provide the next input requirements or you can manually flow from the navigation pan. NH stream is also at 25 degrees Celsius and 1 bar. The molar flow of the NH stream is 10 kmol for the water for the sodium hydroxide. So the inputs of the both feed streams has been provided. You can notice half red circle in the block section. No specification is required for the mixer. However, specifications for the flash columns are required. There are two degree of freedoms for the flash column. One is the pressure and the other one is either you can choose from the temperature, duty or vapor fraction. In the given example, we have 0.75 as a vapor fraction and there is no pressure drop either you can keep the same pressure as one bar or you can provide the zero value if the value is greater than zero then Aspen plus considers this as the absolute pressure of the stream and if the value is negative or equal to the zero Aspen plus considers it as the pressure drop so the required input is complete now you can run the simulation Simulation has been successfully run and the results are available. We were asked to review component concentrations and stream bubble points. In order to review the stream properties, go to the home tab. Under the summary group, you can notice the stream summary. Click the small drop down button. Let's open all the streams since we have only five streams. Let's lightly reorganize the sequence of the streams. The first two columns should be the feed streams. One is HCL, the other one is NUH stream, then the mixed streams, and then the two product streams, liquid and the vapor product streams from the flash column. Here in the results, you can notice the stream temperatures. Both of the feed streams enter at 25 degrees Celsius, whereas the mixed stream is at 59.43 degrees Celsius. Also, the vapor fraction of all these three streams is zero, the liquid fraction of these three streams is 1 and there is no solid present at all. That means the sodium hydroxide has been completely dissolved. It is important to notice the vapor fractions, liquid fractions and solid fractions of the flash column outlets. These are three fractions, vapor, liquid and solid and these are the product streams of the flash column. The vapor stream is completely in the vapor phase. 8.58% solid content and 91.41% liquid content. That means some of the salt has been precipitated out of the liquid phase. Similarly, you can notice other properties, especially the compositions. Under the composition section in the given template, you can notice mole flows, mole fractions, mass flows, mass fractions, 
these four sections are for the global without mentioning any phase and these three sections are for the specific phase for instance under the section mole flows you can notice the composition of all the components available in the process streams as you can notice the compositions of the ionic species has also been defined here you can notice that one kilomole per hour defined for the hydrochloric acid in the HCl stream it has been completely converted into the ionic species similarly you can notice the same for the sodium hydroxide the mole flow of the sodium hydroxide in the NOH stream is also zero whereas the 1.1 kilomole per hour defined in the NOH stream is converted to sodium ions as well as hydroxyl ions as a result of the ionic reactions and the precipitations 0.52 kilomole per hour of solid sodium chloride has been produced the vapor stream from the flash column is pure water vapors with the flow rate of 16.619 kmol per hour whereas the liquid stream from the flash column contains water molecules and the ionic species including sodium chloride and the precipitated sodium chloride salt you can also view the results of vapor phase liquid phase and the solid phase in this section Similarly for the liquid phase all of these streams has been defined in terms of the true components if you are only interested to view the results of the apparent components indicating the composition of water hydrochloric acid sodium hydroxide then you can go to the electrolyte template that defines the composition of the apparent components as well several properties associated with the apparent components for instance the molar flow rate of the apparent component you can notice that the composition of the liquid phase for the apparent component has only been defined for the first three feed components whereas the composition of the ionic species has been translated back to the apparent components in parallel you can view the two species molar flow rates as well where the flow rates of all the two components has been defined further you can notice the properties such as activity coefficients fogacity coefficients solubility index and the ph of the streams you were also asked to notice the bubble point temperature of the flow streams since bubble point temperature is not shown in the current stream summary table you can add any of the property either from this section add properties or you can modify the stream summary template how to add the property from the add properties just click a new window will pop up here all the properties that aspen plus has calculated are listed just search the bubble point here is the bubble point temperature choose it you can notice that the bubble point temperature is shown at the bottom of the selected properties simply add it to the stream summary table here you can notice that the bubble point temperature of the mixed stream before the flash column is 102.81 degrees celsius whereas the bubble point of the bottom liquid stream of the flash column is 109.48 degrees celsius that clearly indicates that since the salt concentration has increased in the bottom liquid product of the flash column that has raised the bubble point temperature of the stream as well compared to the mixed stream before the flash column if you want to change the template go to this section click the small arrow button over here here couple of pre-installed templates are shown including air separation chemicals electrolyte full and solids you can duplicate the template to modify it or you can add entirely a new template here a user defined template is also listed if you want to edit it 
click edit button in this window you have multiple options to modify the steam summary table you can change the description of the header or modify the state conditions that appear in the steam summary table you can play with the scope or you can add the selected properties of your choice the properties with the blue color are default however you can change any of the property listed with the black color you can remove it or you can add a new property of your choice for instance the heat capacity of the mixer here is the heat capacity of the mix stream you can add it to the selection it will appear at the bottom of the table once done you can apply the template here the template app has been modified to change the template with the new name you can click save as new you can choose the name of your choice so another question is since we have defined this as electrolyte system and the solution chemistry is defined in the properties environment what happens if you remove the solution chemistry from the simulation in order to view the comparison let's notice couple of the properties expand the mass flows just to see the comparison of having the solution chemistry and not having the solution chemistry how it will impact on the stream temperatures phase fractions and the composition let's take a snapshot of these properties just to compare afterward now go to the properties environment under the chemistry tab here the solution chemistry is defined you can delete this section Though the components are not deleted and they are still shown in the component list but the chemistry involving the molecular components and the ions has been removed from the simulation. Run the thermophysical properties. Go to the simulation environment. Also run the simulation. Here the new properties without the solution chemistry has appeared. To compare these results with the previous results let's expand the mass flows and open the snapshot. You can clearly compare the temperatures. The temperature of the mixed steam including solution chemistry was 59.43 degrees Celsius whereas without solution chemistry it dropped to 25.04 degrees Celsius. That clearly reflects that the ionic reactions are not involved and a slight increase in the temperature is only because of the physical mixing of the components. Also the temperature of the flash column for 75% vapor fraction has reduced from 109.48 degrees Celsius to 104.2 0 degree Celsius. Similarly, you can compare the phase fraction. Considering the solution chemistry, almost 8.58% solid content was present in the flash column bottom liquid stream, whereas while removing the solution chemistry, no solid phase has been detected in any of the stream. Whereas the HCl stream that had no molar vapor fraction, including the solution chemistry, has shown 9.39% molar vapor fraction. That is because of the physical appearance of HCl component in the gas phase. Also, you can notice the stream flow rate. The steam flow rate of the vapor phase including solution chemistry was to 99.40 kg per hour whereas without solution chemistry it has increased to 317.04 kg per hour. Conversely the flow rate of the liquid has been dropped from 141.35 to 123.71 kg per hour. So that indicates that considering or not considering the solution chemistry while dealing with the electrolyte system has major impact on the simulation results. For further practice, you are given with the following practice problem. Here two streams labeled as H2O and HNO3 are mixed together. The H2O stream is entering at 1 bar 25 degree Celsius with a flow rate of 10 kmol mole per hour. Similarly, the HNO3 stream is also entering at 1 bar 25 degree Celsius but with a flow rate of nitric acid at 2 kmol mole per hour. So you are asked to notice the solution chemistry and equilibrium constant correlation coefficients, molar concentrations of apparent and true components in the mixed stream and notice the effect of H2O flow on the mixed stream pH value. In the next video, we will explore the thermodynamic property methods, explore the wizard for defining the thermophysical property methods and discuss the importance of interaction parameters while performing a process simulation.